The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are going to delve too deep into the customizable keyword that will be part of the Scarlet Keys Investigator expansion. We have a lot to talk about, so we're going to dive right in. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. The Arkham Horror LCG community is amazing, and these people have gone above and beyond to bring you content like these previews. Speaking of amazing members of the community, Michael Layden and John Lowe are the latest patrons to Embrace the Darkness. Thank you very much, Michael and John, for your tremendous support. It is greatly appreciated. You guys rock. Patrons like yourselves have been a source of strength over the past uh, five years that I've been doing this channel, and I look forward to bringing you more great Arkham Horror content in the years to come, and I hope you're looking forward to the Scarlet Keys as much as I am. If you'd like to be amazing like Michael and John and support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your rewards. That would be awesome. Special thanks to Cole Monroe Chitty for the amazing art that graces the channel, Nicole Fiscus for the Whisper in Darkness logo that I use for the podcast, and Nate Lost in Time and Space for the intro as well as the overlays. Thank you very much. I couldn't do it without you. Without further ado, let's get started. Hello Arkham Horror fans, welcome back to my previews of the Scarlet Keys Investigator and Campaign Expansions. In this episode, we are going to dig in to the customizable keyword, which uh, was unveiled on Thursday. So you've probably come to this video looking for information about uh, what the customizable keyword is and uh, how it will affect the game. And uh, honestly, I don't know. In fact, I don't think anybody knows because uh, when FFG unveiled the uh, customizable keyword in their preview on Thursday, the designers decided to keep the rules for customizable to themselves. So frankly, nobody knows how customizable works at the moment. The uh, Arkham Horror community has uh, rushed in to fill that uh, rules void with uh, all sorts of speculation, but uh, unfortunately that's all we have at the moment is speculation. Now the Arkham Horror LCG community are a clever bunch, far more clever than I am, and they have uh, put together their best guesses for how customizable is uh, going to work. I'm going to sum up my thoughts about customizable here quickly before we dig into uh, what the community thinks customizable is uh, going to be. Again, take uh, everything here with a grain of salt because uh, we don't really know what customizable is. Basically, all we know about the customizable keyword right now is that it will allow you to spend experience points to grant player cards, increase stats, reduced costs or entirely new abilities. The uh, template of the card is somewhat similar to that used for bonded cards in that there are uh, no level pips around the resource cost. Probably the biggest issue at the moment is that we don't really understand how the customizable keyword will work or how it will interact with the uh, investigator deck building options. So I've spent a lot of time thinking about the customizable keyword uh, over the past couple days, and I'm just going to boil my thoughts down into a, a couple pros and cons and the uh, TLDR version of my thoughts before we uh, dive into uh, all of the speculation. So I think the pros of the customizable keyword are going to be pretty obvious to most players. Customizable is going to really dramatically increase the design space for the designers, and deck building options for players. If uh, each uh, customizable card contains a half dozen upgrades like we see here on uh, the uh, card for Hunter's Armor, there are essentially six, seven, eight versions of that card and uh, potentially many, many more if you can uh, mix and match upgrades. That is going to be fantastic for players when they sit down to build their decks. They're just going to have so many more options to explore, which is generally a good thing for the game. Now, there are also several potential cons to the customizable keyword. The first of which being it's going to involve more bookkeeping, especially if you are running multiple customizable cards in multiple decks over multiple campaigns. Now, Arkham Horror LCG players are accustomed to some bookkeeping. 
We do have to fill out the campaign log after we play scenarios. We do have to keep track of the tokens in the uh, chaos bag, which can change from scenario to scenario depending on which campaign you're playing. However, the amount of bookkeeping you're going to be required to do with customizable cards could quickly become too much, if, uh, especially if you have multiple customizable cards in your deck, or you're one of those players who has multiple decks and you're playing multiple campaigns. Players are going to need to find a way to, to keep track of what their customizable cards do, and they're going to have to remember from game to game which deck they're playing and what the customizable cards in that deck happen to do. So there is going to be more bookkeeping on the uh, player side of the equation. Another potential problem with customizable cards is that the rules are no longer contained to the card itself. As we see here with uh, the upgrade for Hunter's Armor, you're going to have a separate card or sheet that you're going to have to refer to to know what your card does. And this could potentially change from scenario to scenario, depending on how much XP you spend on these cards. That creates potential problems for players, especially in a multiplayer setting. Typically, if a, a player is playing a card like Meat Cleaver, for example, I know what Meat Cleaver does. But if you are playing a customizable Runic Axe and I or Hunter's Armor and I don't know what uh, upgrades you've chosen, it's pretty hard for me to help enforce the rules as the game goes on. If you forget something, other players aren't necessarily going to be able to chip in and say, hey, you forgot that trigger on Hunter's Armor because they don't necessarily know which abilities you purchased for Hunter's Armor or the six or seven abilities that are available on the customizable card in question. So I'm not a huge fan of the idea that the rules are no longer contained to the cards themselves. You can't look at a card on the table and know exactly what it does. You're going to have to refer to an outside source. And if you're the only player at the table who has that information, that makes it a little more challenging for the other players at the table to, uh, to play the game. Now, depending on the rules for the customizable keyword, it's also going to increase the rules overhead for players. You're going to have to remember how customizable cards work and how they interact with deck building options. And uh, that's just going to increase the number of rules that uh, players have to remember. Now, the Arkham Horror LCG is already a very complicated game with a lot of rules. The timing system can be quite difficult for new players to grasp, and this is just going to add another step on the learning curve for new players. There are a couple of other cons I thought about for customizable cards. These aren't necessarily the most important issues, but uh, I think they are worth noting. One is uh, how customizable cards will be uh, recorded by Arkham DB, which is the uh, main deck building site that uh, most players use. It's not uh, entirely clear at the moment how those cards will be kept in that system or how players will be able to uh, talk about them when they build a deck. Because if I'm looking for at two decks with the Hunter arm, Hunter's Armor card in it, one of those decks could be using one set of upgrades for the Hunter's Armor, and the other deck could be using an entirely different set of upgrades for the Hunter's Armor. So it, it's going to be more challenging for players to sit down and look at a source like Arkham DB and say, like, well, what does this deck do? The onus is going to be on the deck builders to include all of this information in their uh, write-ups of the deck now, some deck builders do uh, very thorough write-ups of the decks they build, others less so. And so it's going to you're going to have to do, I think, a little bit of extra work to explain how these customizable cards are used in your deck. The other potential impact that we don't really know yet is how customizable is going to affect content creators like myself and the way we discuss cards and evaluate them. If a card has six potential versions and then you multiply that exponentially if you can mix and match all of these upgrades it's going to be a lot more challenging for content creators to talk about these cards and uh, especially for i think matastrophic nate and uh, i to review these cards 
when we sit down to uh, review cards, it's inevitable that uh, we miss some interaction between one investigator and uh, one particular card. And I think this is just going to uh, increase the potential for uh, just missing interactions because you might be able to say, well, you know, Carolyn Fern has this amazing interaction with this one particular upgrade on one particular customizable card. And uh, when you multiply that by the nearly, I don't know, I think at this point there are 50 investigators in the game, that's just going to create a lot of potential interactions that are going to be very difficult to talk about. And I think we'll see that in my reviews of the, uh, and I think we're going to see that when I take a look at the, uh, the four customizable cards that uh, FFG spoiled on Thursday. TLDR, for those of you who aren't going to spend the next 30, 40 minutes, with me uh, learning about customizable cards. Here's what I think about them. Personally, I have enough trouble keeping track of the rules on uh, the player cards in my deck and the encounter cards on the table as it is. Those of uh, those of you who have watched playthroughs on this channel uh, know that already. I do make play mistakes and I, I forget to read the cards properly. And uh, I think cards do one thing when they actually don't do that thing, or I misremember a card. Customizable upgrades are yet another set of rules that I am going to have to keep track of, which uh, I think increases the chance that uh, I'm going to make errors. I'm going to forget how my upgrades work, or I'm going to misremember what an upgrade does because I haven't had a chance to look at the upgrade card. So... I think for a player like me, I really feel that that rules overhead sort of weighing down on me. Not only do I have to remember what these customizable cards do, but that information is not written on the cards themselves anymore. So I can't easily refer to it. I'll have, say, this upgrade card beside me, and if I forget what it does, chances for mistakes increase. That said, it's really difficult to ignore the keywords potential rewards, both for designers in increasing the design space, as well as uh, players who will have uh, that many more deck building options. Are those rewards worth the risk? Obviously, the designers think so, or they wouldn't have created the uh, customizable keyword uh, in the first place. But I think it's going to be really difficult to say until we actually get to our hands on the rules for customizable cards and we uh, really get to see how they operate. Speaking of the rules for customizable cards, there is a, a lot of speculation in the community what customizable cards do. And uh, I am in debt here to uh, Lord of Ravens over on the Mythos Busters Discord channel, who uh, basically put together a little primer about what we know and what we don't know about customizable cards. So I'm going to be referring to Lord of Raven's uh, information here. Big thank you to them for putting this together and sort of clarifying a lot of the issues uh, that are currently surrounding customizable cards sort of in the, uh, the current rules vacuum. So here's what we 100% know about customizable cards. Customizable cards are going to be tied to either a sheet or a upgrade card, such as the one pictured uh, here for uh, Hunter's Armor. When you pick up your uh, Scarlet Keys Investigator expansion, you're going to get 48 of these upgrade cards or sheets in the box, and you're going to have uh, the potential to... Uh, to download more from FFG's website and print them off for yourselves. So if you don't feel like marking up these upgrade cards or sheets, you can print them off yourself and uh, check the boxes there. The other thing we know is that you can pay XP to make these cards better. That much is clear from Thursday's preview article. Now, Lord of Ravens goes on to talk a little bit about what we can safely infer from the information that we've uh, received from FFG so far. First, I think it's a pretty safe assumption that you are going to be putting a real card in your deck, not the upgrade card, such as the one pictured for Hunter's uh, armor to the left of me here. The player cards are still going to have the traditional backs that we've become accustomed to. You're simply going to have this upgrade card or sheet next to your deck, and you're going to have to refer to it 
as you play. The other thing we know based on the template that they've used for these customizable cards is that they are not just level zero cards that you can upgrade for XP. They do have a uh, different template around uh, the resource cost similar to that of bonded cards although it is not the same it does look similar but it is not the same so they don't have level pips this raises a whole host of questions for players who don't really understand right now how the level system works with these cards we also can safely infer that there are between two and six customizable cards for each faction in the game the ffg preview article spoiled two of the guardian cards and uh, two of the mystic cards if you do the math and break down the number of cards in the set by class you roughly end up with between two and six customizable cards for each faction. Again, we don't know the exact number of customizable cards that each class is going to get, but we can have a pretty good idea based on the size of past sets and the number of cards that each uh, class receives. I think it's also safe to assume that uh, all copies of a customizable card in your deck will share the same upgrade card. So if you have an upgrade card for Hunter's Armor, it will apply to all copies of Hunter's Armor in your deck. Now, the alternative to this is that you have multiple upgrade cards for each version of Hunter's Armor in your deck, but this just seems like it would be way too confusing, and I don't think there would be a way to actually mark which copy of Hunter's Armor applies to which Hunter's Armor upgrade. So a like uh, Lord of Raven points out here, I think it's pretty safe to assume that if you put Hunter's Armor in your deck and you have a Hunter's Armor upgrade card, whatever upgrades are checked on that card will apply to both copies of Hunter Armor in your deck. Otherwise, I think it would just be way too confusing and uh, way too unwieldy for players. Customizable cards are already going to require some upkeeping and forcing players to track multiple upgrades for multiple cards would just become way too unwieldy. Lord of Ravens goes on to point out some of the things that we can somewhat infer based on uh, what we learned in the preview article, and that being one of the tick boxes on the uh, upgrade cards to the left is equal to one XP. I think this is a pretty safe assumption as we can see here, Hunter's Armor has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six different upgrades. There's an upgrade like Enchanted that has one tick box beside it, and then Protective Runes has two tick boxes beside it. So I think it is a pretty safe assumption that if you pay one XP, you get to put one check beside Enchanted. If you spend three XP, you'll get to put the three checks beside uh, Armor of Thorns. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. Now we get into the realm of wild speculation, and uh, I think Lord of Ravens uh, correctly points out here that uh, basically everything else about customize the customizable keyword is just wild speculation at this point, especially how this keyword will interact with deck building options. We'll take a look at an example in a moment, and you will quickly see there are a lot of questions uh, that the community has and that the community will need to be answered before we can actually judge how this uh, this keyword is going to affect the game. Finally, Lord of Ravens points out the information that we need going forward. First of all, we need to know, is there a limitation on the total number of these checkboxes that you can check? So if I have this Hunter's Armor card, how many of these boxes can I check? Can I check all of them? If I check all of them, that's, what is it, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Can I pump 15 experience points into a cop, into this Hunter's Armor upgrade and check all the boxes? The other question we have is, uh, if you can upgrade a card more than once, and if so, what is the limit? Again, this is similar to the, the previous question. If you upgrade Hunter's Armor, are you limited to checking one of these boxes? So you can take Enchanted or protective runes, but not both? Or can you check multiple boxes so you can have enchanted protective runes and durable if you want? Or can you check all the boxes and have a uh, souped up hunter's armor? Again, we don't know that. We don't know if there's a limit to the number of boxes you can check. One of the other questions we have is uh, how does adding a second or third copy of a customizable card work. As we'll see in a moment, there is a spell power word, and one of the upgrades for that card is adding a third copy 
of Power Word to your deck as one of the upgrades, similar to what we saw with the uh, Myriad keyword in the uh, Dream Eater cycle. I think we can answer this question right now. I think it's pretty clear that you're going to have one upgrade card for all of the hunter armors in your deck. So if you were able to add, say, a third hunter armor, it would have the same upgrades as the other two that you added to your deck. So that's all of the information that uh, Lord of Ravens compiled over on the Mythos Busters Discord uh, channel. A big thanks to Lord of Ravens uh, for their hard work in uh, helping to clarify what exactly uh, customizable cards do. I had a few questions of my own over the past uh, couple days, and I, I just wanted to run through them quickly with you because I think they sort of boil down what kind of information the community is looking for. First of all, are cards with the customizable keyword level zero cards? If they're not level zero cards, do they level up as you spend experience points to upgrade them? For example, if... I have Hunter's Armor in my deck, and I spend 1 XP to purchase the Enchanted upgrade. Is the Hunter's Armor in my deck now a level 1 card? If I purchase Armor of Thorns, is Hunter's Armor now a level 3 card? We don't know that. The other question I had is, if they level up, how do you calculate that level, and is there a limit? So if I purchase the Enchanted... Uh, upgrade for Hunter's Armor, for example, it costs, looks like it costs 1 XP, and then I purchase Protective Runes, which looks like it costs 2 XP. Is Hunter's Armor now a 2 XP card, or is it a 3 XP card, because you've spent 3 XP on it? And is there a limit to the amount of XP that I can spend? Because it looks like with Hunter's Armor, I could pump 15 XP into this card, but obviously, this game doesn't have 15 XP cards. So if these cards do sort of level up, is there an upper limit? So if I was to purchase the Armor of Thorns upgrade, is it capped at three? So it's regardless of how many upgrades I purchase for this card, the top, uh, the top upgrade I can purchase is a level three upgrade. So the card will become level three. We don't really know that. The other question I had, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a moment, is how do customizable cards interact with deck building options? This is a, a real hornet's nest, and uh, I'll give you an example here in just a moment that I think will uh, show you just sort of how many questions the community has about this. The other question I had was, can you purchase upgrades with the XP that you earn from cards like In the Thick of It? In the Thick of It, of course, was a neutral permanent that was released in the Edge of the Earth expansion that gave you 3 XP for taking a couple of trauma. So if I purchase In the Thick of It and I take Hunter's Armor, can I take that 3 XP I earned from In the Thick of It and then pump it into the Hunter's Armor? So I'm essentially starting the game or the campaign with a hunter's armor that has armor of thorns on it which costs looks like it costs three xp or can i purchase enchanted and protective runes for my hunter's armor with that xp that's not clear this naturally leads us to the question of how do customizable spells work with a card like arcane research which allows you to reduce the cost of upgrading your spells there is a uh, customizable spell that we're going to look at a little bit later in this episode. Does arcane research affect that? We don't know. But let's return to the, the whole question of how customizable cards interact with deck building options. And uh, I don't think there's any better investigator to talk about that than uh, our friend Carolyn Fern, who was released in the uh, Circle Undone expansion. Just as a quick reminder, Carolyn Fern's deck building options are Guardian cards level 0 to 3, Neutral cards level 0 to 5, cards that heal horror level 0 to 5, up to 15 other Seeker and or Mystic cards level 0 to 1. Her additional restrictions include no weapon cards level 1 to 5. So this raises a whole host of questions, and unfortunately we don't have the answers to them yet. For example, if I'm playing Carolyn and I include a customizable Guardian card in my deck, like the Hunter's Armor, can she upgrade it? 
She can only take guardian cards level zero to three. So if I have a guardian card that has four pips on it, can she purchase that upgrade? Part of me thinks no, because if cards, if these customizable cards level up, like I think they do, if you're per if you're pumping XP into them, that seems like a way she could purchase much more powerful guardian cards than she would typically have access to. But I could easily see it going the other way, and if customizable cards are considered level zero cards at all times, then there would be nothing stopping her from pumping five XP into a guardian upgrade and theoretically getting a card that is slightly better than a guardian card level zero to three. The other question I had is if Carolyn includes a card like Runic Axe that we'll look at in a moment, can she upgrade it? Runic Axe is a customizable guardian card. It has a whole raft of upgrades, but Carolyn can only include weapon cards level one to five. So can she upgrade the Runic Axe? Again, it's not clear. Personally, I don't think she could, which sort of raises the question, could she upgrade the Guardian cards? Because Runic Axe has some very powerful abilities and Carolyn's deck building restrictions are pretty clear that they don't want her using weapons. So being able to upgrade the Runic Axe would let her essentially, if Runic Axe is level zero, let her bypass those deck building restrictions. So given what we know about a card like Runic Axe, it seems highly unlikely that Carolyn will be able to upgrade it, even if she can include the, uh, the base version in her deck. This brings us to the next line of uh, Carolyn's deck building restrictions. Can she include customizable Seeker and or Mystic cards in her deck? She can include Seeker and Mystic cards level 0 to 1 in her deck. If customizable cards are level 0 cards, then Carolyn could include them. But then, of course, we end up in that whole upgrade situation. If she can upgrade those Seeker and Mystic cards, she could potentially have level two, three, four, five Seeker and Mystic cards in her deck. So again, it feels like there needs to be some sort of restrictions there to keep those customizable cards out of Carolyn's hands. So maybe customizable cards will be limited to whichever class you are. So Carolyn is a guardian. She is only allowed to purchase guardian customizable cards. Seeker and Mystic customizable cards are off limits. Finally, we come to the last uh, deck building option for Carolyn, and that is cards that heal horror. Now, these types of cards are spread throughout all of the classes uh, in the game. So what if we have a customizable card that does not heal horror on the base version, but it includes an upgrade that allows you to heal horror? Can Carolyn purchase that card? or upgrade that card and then include it in her deck. Again, this isn't clear. Now, I don't think they've spoiled a card that does that, but it is a potential question. So you can see from just this one investigator, and there are, what, we've got almost 50 investigators in the game now with very different deck building options. Customizable raises a whole bunch of questions, and unfortunately, we simply don't have the answers to those questions now. So an investigator like Carolyn, who has all sorts of deck building options, we're really going to have to figure out how those interact with customizable cards. And uh, hopefully we will get some sort of clarification sooner than later from the designers as to exactly how customizable cards are going to work with uh, the deck building options on investigators. So I think I'm going to end the video there. I initially anticipated that I was going to uh, talk about the uh, four customizable cards that uh, FFG spoiled in their preview article, but I suspect that is going to take me a little longer than expected, so we'll save that uh, for another video. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope that you learned a little bit uh, about the customizable keyword in this video. I realize there is uh, more speculation than information out there at the moment. Hopefully FFG will release the rules for the customizable keyword here in the near future and we will be able to figure out what it actually means for the game. In the meantime, let me know in the comments down below what you think about the customizable keyword. I would love to hear from you.
That's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.